Hi there. Today we're at the Air Mobility Command Museum in Dover, Delaware, just next to the uh, Dover Air Force Base, which is their home base. We actually filmed this visit in the winter of 2022-23, and it was a bitterly cold day. Nice, clear winter weather from the blue sky, as you can see, but very, very cold. If you're an app geek like me, this, uh, this museum has a load of uh, really interesting uh, machinery. It's a little quiet, there's not many people around, which is great. So we really took our time and had a good look around. So as I said before, it's right next to Dover Air Force Base. You can see all the military transports all lined up there. And I think it's actually part of the, the same property, not 100% sure. So uh, after paying to get in, we went to the indoor exhibits. I apologise for the lighting quality here. Uh, light levels within the hangar were pretty low. Um, we've got a magnificent DC-3 here. I love the DC-3. Um, had a lot, of, lot to do with them when I was growing up. This particular machine was in Operation Market Garden and many others and has a storied history. For the full details, visit the site. This particular uh, airplane, you can not only check it out from the outside, but you can also have a look inside, which is really quite interesting. The museum's put a lot of work in the diorama outside, and inside is fitted out as it would have been for D-Day. I'm really surprised how many uh, controls there are here for what's essentially a two-engine prop plane. It does look like they've done a bunch of customization though with the controls. Are they eight balls on the on the levers, the levers? Not sure. This particular plane was used for both paratroopers and airlift. And so for airlift, it's equipped with uh, these controls, which allows you to slide the pallets in a regular order. So this old girl got a lot of attention, a B-17, Flying Fortress. Of course, this is not a military transport aircraft. But I guess if you have a B-17 sitting around, you might as well put it in the museum, right? So between the, uh, the B-17 and the DC-3, that's most of the floor space on the internal museum. In addition though, there's uh, there are a bunch of helicopter exhibits as well. It's bitterly cold outside, but uh, let's head outside and see what we have there. So first up, we have this magnificent C-5 Galaxy. This is one of the uh, largest strategic airlift uh, aircraft in the world, and uh, it's truly massive. As mentioned in the display, this particular aircraft was the first to launch an intercontinental ballistic missile, uh, a nuclear-tipped uh, ICBM. At first I was confused what a um, 
ICBM was doing here, but then it was uh, clear that this was actually carried on this plane. The outdoor tarmac area is literally chock a block with displays here, some of which you can go inside and some you can only look at from the outside. But they are really packed in here and the time frame from maybe the Second World War through to the 2000s, uh, just a complete range of military transport aircraft. Some of these stand out more than the others. This one is an ugly duckling, the Stratofreighter. It uh, really looks uh, quite ugly, but I'm sure it was effective. They also have a, a, a super constellation. The only other one I know of is uh, down in Australia at the Haas Museum just south of Sydney. That one is a, a flying model though. So the tarmac for the museum abuts the taxiway for the base. So you get to see um, real live machines as well. Another ugly duckling, the flying boxcar, which is immediately recognizable. There really is a huge variety of aircraft here. Caribous, Hercules, uh, boxcars, just lots and lots of different sorts of planes. The museum has a, a couple of C-141 Starlifters. Uh, a couple of different models and they're open so you can go in and have a look. These machines first entered service in the uh, 1960s and had an impressive cargo capacity for that time. They weren't actually withdrawn f until the early 2000s when they were replaced with Globemasters. The Military Airlift Command and its predecessors uh, don't just move military cargoes around, they also move a lot of people, so they have passenger jets as well. This is one of the aircraft you can tour on the outside and also have a look inside. So let's go have a look. Okay, I guess not through that uh, entrance. Not that sure I'm that interested anyway, so let's go have a look at some of the, uh, the, the fighters. Of course, these aren't military airlift either, but anyway, if you happen to have a starfighter hanging around, you're going to put it in the museum. All right, here's the last aircraft, the C-131 Samaritan. In addition to all the aircraft here, there's also 
a control tower that you can visit. Uh, I'm not sure it's an active control tower, but it has an excellent view over the Air Force Base and the collection of the aircraft. This isn't actually a uh, active control tower, of course, but it is tuned in to some of the aviation frequencies so you can listen in. So that's it for our trip to the Air Mobility Command Museum in Dover, Delaware. I hope you found it interesting. It certainly covers the, uh, the history of the Mobility Command and lots of other things as well. So if you're coming down this way, passing through Delaware, consider stopping in. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and hit like if you appreciate my content. It really helps me out. Thanks.